Hi, my name is Via, I'm an illustrator from Portugal and today I'm going to chat about YouTube and my journey on it. Let's get into it. If you don't know me, I have a shop, an online shop where I sell my products. I'm an illustrator and I apply my illustrations into stationery, socks, pen, a little bit of everything. So I'm going to leave links in the description if you want to check that out. Besides that, I also run a YouTube channel. Um, so this is kind of like my side job kind of thing. I'm going to divide this video into several parts. I asked on Instagram a couple of questions a few weeks ago. I'm going to be talking about how I started, some tips, um, how much I make on YouTube um, as a Portuguese artist and also chat a little bit more about like editing um, and all of that. The very first question that I got was how did I start? If you want to check the whole journey, um, I'm going to leave a link on the description of a video that I made where I shared like my whole journey as an illustrator, starting a shop and all of that. I was basically backpacking uh, Southeast Asia. I was actually in Indonesia at the time when I discovered YouTube. And then I found Catnip and Frenard. Those were the two first creators that I found on YouTube. I had already been started in my um, illustrator uh, journey two year, years prior to that but I only used Instagram and I only did portraits with my style uh, so I didn't really apply them to products or anything like that I basically realized that people were making this um, as a job and as a living and at the time I just had just graduated from conservation and restoration of art and I thought that was the thing that I was going to do and I realized that this was what I wanted to do. Um, so when I came back to Portugal, I started my online shop. I started to see how I could apply my products, my illustrations to products. And that was the beginning of the whole thing. So basically YouTube always had like a huge presence for me um, and how I started and all of that. And uh, since that time, I always had this idea of creating a YouTube channel, but I never really found the courage for it. And maybe beginning of 2019, I joined Frenard uh, Patreon. Again, she was like a huge inspiration for me. And I remember very vividly that she made a podcast where she talked about like facing your fears and trying not to overthink too much and trying to like ignore what other people would think about you. And after listening to that podcast, I don't know what came on on me, but I was like, okay, I have to do this <laughs> and I started to film and if you go like all the way back to my videos um, the first ever video that I posted was in August 2019 and I didn't even spoke on that video it was just me like filming and doing stuff and I remember that even before that I started to film some clips here and there that I basically never used just to get the sense if I enjoyed filming what I was doing the hardest thing was for for me to remember filming and to incorporate that on my day to day. So I really advise you to just even think about like, you're not going to post this anywhere. You're just going to start and you're just going to get the sense of it, see if you like it and, and basically incorporate that into your routine. The first one was done um, and then I gained the courage to speak for the first time and it was so bad, it was so awkward. Hello. Hi there, welcome to the first studio vlog. This is awkward. <laughs> I remember vividly, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I talking to a camera? Again, now, like five years later, it's second nature to me. I know that I'm talking with you and we are going to chat in the comments and all of that. Uh, but starting out, it's just like, this is so ridiculous. Be three years into the journey of starting my YouTube channel, I start to feel it started to feel natural. So it's something that is going to take a while. Some of my first videos, I wasn't even talking like this. I'm not talking in like my um, native language. So that's always like a struggle as well. But even like just forming sentences, I would forget what I was saying in the middle of it. I was talking really, really slow. Hello again, welcome back to another studio vlog. So um, welcome to Monday. So yeah, this week will be a very busy week uh, because I was embarrassed and I was like um, just basically overthinking everything that I was doing um, so it's going to take a while I just try to keep going and don't give up on 
this relationship here with the camera. <laughs> What I used starting out was this little tripod. This one came with a, um, a phone mount because at the time I was only using like a very crappy phone that I had. Again, if you're going to see my first videos, they are all wobbly. Don't uh, uh, think too much about the equipment and try not to spend so much money because you're still not sure if you even enjoy like filming and incorporate like filming into your day life. And I got the tripod that I'm using right now and it's still the one that I have. It's like the cheapest one on Amazon really. I only got my first camera, which is the one that I'm using right now as well. It's a um, Canon G7X Mark II and I got it once I started to um, be paid by YouTube, which it didn't pay for itself, but I was like celebrating. <laughs> A lot of people asked uh, on tips on how to start and how to overcome shyness and being awkward on camera. And I'm really sad to say that it's something that really comes with time. As I said, it took me years to finally feel natural talking to the camera. I think it really helps not filming yourself for the first time. Uh, you can start by just filming your hands and not even showing your face and then maybe incorporate, if you're comfortable with it, um, a voiceover or something so that you get used to hearing yourself because I think that's one of the hardest things, at least for me it was, was to hear myself and see myself talk. Me to this day, it also helps um, to know that I have no one around me. Being on a comfortable place um, and trying to see if there's no one around, I think it really helps um, and put yourself as much comfortable as you can. Okay, let's get into the questions about my process, editing, filming, all those kind of things. Do you do a lot of planning for your videos or does it come together while editing? It really depends on the videos. Uh, so for this sit-down videos, kind of tutorial kind of videos, I don't exactly write a script, but I know some people write the script and that makes it easier for them. Like for tutorials, I write some points of things that I don't want to miss and how I want to structure the video. But for studio vlogs, I try to have like a base idea of what I'm going to do. Um, that we try to focus the video on that because I feel like it's more interesting. I started to notice that people were really interesting about knowing the process of what I was doing. I think it was the fourth or fifth video that I posted. Um, I was doing notebooks on that week. So I've posted, uh, I did the thumbnail and I did the theme of the video of me making notebooks and showing the process of that. And at the time I didn't even have like a hundred followers and that video had a little bit more views than I would n normally uh, have. That's how I also realized that if I would do tutorials um, of the things that I do, of the process that I do, creating my products, um, they would do well. So I think like structuring your videos and do it by thing, it might help not only for you to be organized and to have a more fixed idea of what's important to film, but also to realize what might work for your channel. How long do you spend recording, editing, thumbnailing, etc.? So again, it really depends on the type of videos. So for studio vlogs, I don't really think a lot about how long it's going to take me to film because I'm filming throughout my week and sometimes I end up with two hours of footage, sometimes I end up with five hours of footage. For this kind of videos, for tutorials and all of that, it also really depends. I know for my notebook tutorial, like the one that had more views, um, it took me two days because of the process of making the product and all of that, it also takes me a long time. Editing, it used to take me like two days of editing. Now it takes me maybe an afternoon, maybe five hours of editing. And then for thumbnails, updating the video on YouTube, selecting like the advertisements and all of that, it takes me maybe an hour or two extra. Count with at least a day if you have like zero experience. Someone also asked what software do I use? I use Adobe Premiere and I, I've been using it since the beginning because since like university it's always been the softwares that I used so I was used to it. I had filters on these videos like color grading, a lot, all of that. I already have everything saved in there uh, so for me it just makes the process a lot faster and easier. 
The main questions were actually on this subject, which was more related, like YouTube related to my online shop and sales and all of that. First of all, I just want to share that I didn't start my YouTube channel with the goal of like improving my um, online sales. I just really loved the creators that I was seeing and they inspired me so much. And I really loved the idea of like filming the process of what I was doing and also helping out people that were starting out. It's really important to do it for like the not the right reasons, but doing for the love of it and not because you want to something out of it because otherwise I think it's going to be really easy to just not making videos anymore or just give up because you don't see the results right away. I my YouTube channel on August of 2019 and I opened my Patreon for the first time on July 2020 and I still had like maybe not even a thousand subscribers at the time, um, maybe 500, 600 subscribers and I reached my goal of 10 patrons on the launch day. Um, I'm making this video to announce that I created a Patreon page. Um, it's 11.30, it's Patreon launching day, I've hit the, um, the goal for this month, which was 10 patrons. I'm speechless. <laughs> um, and it went really, really well, like from the beginning. So I think it, it directly affected that. Um, and me being able to do this as a living, um, 100% I, I think it was related to YouTube, not only because I was working hard for it, but also a little bit of luck. Um, if you really love it and you really want to do it, um, just go for it. And again, don't think about the sales right away and don't think about how it's going to improve your uh, income and all that. But if you really love it, if you really feel a passion of like sharing your day-to-day -day and sharing your process. At least for me, it, it made like the whole difference. I realized that again, the videos and tutorials where I show the process on how I would make my products, um, they always get got a little bit more views than everything else. Like I would do my notepads, um, everything related to stationery would go very, very well, even when inserted in studio vlogs. I decided to do a super complete notebook tutorial. Like uh, I was hoping that it would get a little bit more views and a little bit more traction and a little bit more people to my channel, but it literally blew up and it's now almost in 1 million views three years later um, and that I know a lot of you reached my channel and still reach my channel because of that video which I'm so so thankful for my business grew a lot my patron grew a lot because of that video um, because people were interested on how I did things and how much work it took and all of that um, and a lot of people were appreciated by the information and they went to my shop and my patron uh, to get more info and to get more behind the scenes and to get a little bit more um, besides that video. So tutorials for me and sit down videos are the ones that reach more people and get more people to my channel. So it's definitely the ones that maybe don't get sales directly, but maybe people start to follow me on Instagram and something like that. And they would get interested in buying from my shop directly. I have no idea how much sales it generates, but I know a lot of people start to follow my journey because of the tutorials that I post. How does your YouTube compare to other social media in terms of generating sales? Do you think YouTube is better than Instagram? I think they really complement each other. I know people complain a lot about Instagram, but I still love it. And I know that my posts like reach barely no one, but for me, the social part of it is so, so important. I know that some people that follow me on Instagram will never see my videos on YouTube and people that see my videos on YouTube will never like don't even follow me on Instagram if you don't check the link in the description and start to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> As an income not related to sales, I think YouTube. I feel like YouTube is a lot worth more worth it to spend the time editing and thumbnailing, doing all of these things, because income-wise, even after months or even after years, I'm still getting some income from those tutorials that I posted three years ago um, or four years ago. Um, so in terms of like, 
putting um, your eggs in one basket. I think you do, but again, it's something that takes time to grow um, and it's something that it takes a while until you start to see um, an income directly. I started only on Instagram and I was having sales and um, uh, people were buying my portraits from there. So it really depends on where you want to go, but I think having them both and complementing both, I think it's the way to go. Uh, putting your efforts into creating content, I think YouTube makes the whole difference because you see something directly coming from it, if that makes sense. Does YouTube pay well in Portugal? Uh, I know it really depends on like a lot of things. Some videos are better paid than others because it depends on like the click rate, the how much time people watch the video, uh, if they pause and leave YouTube, um, where they are coming from. I, even in like similar type of videos like studio vlogs, I get like 15 euros per studio vlogs and another time I get like 30 or 14 in one week. So it really, really depends um, what I can share from my income that I got from 2023 and 2024. It's like my average is like 300 euros per month. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's a little bit more for me, um, at least from where I live, the expenses that I have and all of that, it really, really helps. And I can pay this studio with it. I'm an illustrator, I not a content creator, even though I am, but it's something like it's added to my work. Um, so I feel like it's an extra income that I get at the end of the month. That in mind, you can um, get your conclusion if it's a lot or not. We are almost reaching the end of the video. If you are enjoying it and if you want to check everything else that I do, you can check my Instagram and my online shop. And if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe and put like and all of those things because it helps my channel grow. So yeah. <laughs> The last question that I got is how often did you thought of quitting or skipping a vlog week and what kept you going? I don't know if I ever thought about quitting like at all or 100%. Um, there's always some weeks where it feels a bit overwhelming or you feel like what you filmed on that week um, doesn't have quality or something, especially when your views go down and down and down, um, uh, especially compared to like previous years or something like that, messed up with your motivation. I take breaks and sometimes I'm more unmotivated um, to film and to post. I really enjoy what I do here. I really enjoy sharing my week. I really enjoy sharing the process, helping out people, uh, sharing my day-to-day -day as an illustrator. As I saw Frenard and Catnip and I got inspired to pursue this as my career and as my living, um, I can do that for other people and that is really my passion. And again, liking this for the right reasons, it makes you not want to quit because you like it so much. Again, it took me months to get to 100 subscribers. I remember I created my channel in August and in the New Year's Eve from 2019 to 2020, I was asking like everyone around me to subscribe to my channel. Um, and I reached 100 subscribers on the uh, when midnight hit. So I was super, super happy. And then it took me a whole year to get to 1000. So it took me like a year and a half. Um, just keep trying out new videos, keep trying out new ideas, other type of content. Few are watching this video because you want to start a channel, go for it, you got this. Let's create this again, how I started mine, it was just because of a podcast that I listened from Farnard. Let's ignore people's expectations and what people might think. Maybe try to edit those clips and do as I did, a two or three minute video, just to get the hang of it and just to get that first step out of the way. Um, and then, it's baby steps and everything will come together. I just want to add that for me as an artist, YouTube is like an amazing platform and it definitely changed my life. I'm so, so grateful for Be For The Past, for starting this channel, for posting the videos, for getting the courage for it. And it definitely made a difference as an artist. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and that you enjoy like being on a question form. If you have other questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them or even do a two-part video. If you have a YouTube channel, um, comment below so people can go to your YouTube. And if you are starting out, let us know in the comments. Found the courage finally to give the first step. And when you post your first video, just come and give 
Amazon update so we can go in there and give you a little bit of support so let's start this chain of support in the comments I think that will be super super cool if you have been following me since the beginning or just a couple of weeks ago thank you so so much just by watching these videos it helps me again to pay for these studios and to help me making a living as an artist so thank you so so much Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was inspiring and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! Bye!